Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing this evening? I am your Planetary Defense Commander, Star-Lord New Door 7, the T, and I am mentally, physically, and probably spiritually exhausted. But I am here with you, bringing you the updated information, because 2021 is a bit wild, and has been dangerous, and will be filled with surprises. We've been getting hit with a large, steady stream of solar wind, and now we have a coronal mass ejection headed towards us that comes from a major filament tear-off. And so after a major storm that ripped through the south, we now have a solar storm that will be hitting our upper atmosphere. And I have been in a good mood all day, oddly enough, and I think it has something to do with the fact that the sun is waking up again. We have three sunspots on the sun right now. And to no surprise, we got hit with those uh, ice mageddon, cold temperatures and ice during the sun when it went into solar minimum conditions. Because empires fall when we go into solar minimum and then empires rise when we get to solar maximum. And so we've been coming out of a deep solar minimum in the middle of 2018 and we are still climbing our way out it is expected to peak around 2015 i'm sorry 2025 it took us back a decade for some reason and so stay tuned because we are in the future and the future is always interesting without a doubt and here in astro fight club we have our eyes on a little bit of everything and we are 99 days away from hurricane season and the spring is always very floody and severe weathery with tornadoes and such. Yesterday, we had flaming United Airlines Boeing 777 engines. And tonight, we have a meteor that was seen pretty dang bright and headed straight towards the ground in Alberta, Canada. So we had the power out in Houston and Texas earlier this week. And now, apparently, Spectrum is having a major outage in Los Angeles and San Francisco. It's just interesting. And it's only been like two months, or is it three, since the Jupiter-Saturn grand conjunction in the sky. And a lot has happened since then. So we basically went from like 200 years of a very earthy vibration tone to now we're transferring into something more airy. So it's like the universe saying that outer space and our atmosphere will definitely be more on the docket. And I wanted to point this out because satellites are playing a major role in everything and will continue to play a major role in everything. It was like back in the day, a hundred years ago, it was all about the oil, oil lines, very earthy, petroleum. But now it's like satellites are the new oil. Does that make sense? But different. Because we're in the future. But this satellite feed appears to be a bit glitchy or interesting. Are these artifacts? Who knows? But no matter what, you couldn't have stopped a giant wild burst of cold Arctic air. And like I said, spring will have a much more floody and tornado -y aspect to it than the winter storms will. And then, you know, over the next month, we'll be transferring from cold to warmer with pockets of both in between. And at eight years of Thor news, you know, I can always throw volcanoes in, whatever the subject is, and it seems to be totally relevant. We're continuing to watch the hot box as my Ed has been totally freaking out, and the three volcanoes down here in Mexico and Guatemala have been super active lately. And then you could throw Mount Kalua in Hawaii into the mix. Definitely there's been a lot of change from November 2020 to February. And this volcano went super active again in Hawaii on the day of the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction. A lot has changed even just in the spirit of things, you know. I, for one, am glad to be out of the pure schadenfreude misinformation marketing economy of 2015 to 2020. How much has it changed? I don't know, in 2020, it was like 
if you think you might have the hoax deep state, it's just a flu virus, then try injecting bleak, question mark, shrug, hashtag Sark. And now in 2021, the main overall narrative seems to be, hey, buy Bitcoin and maybe some Dogecoin. So that's definitely like things have changed a lot in the few months since November. The White House tonight had candles for a moment of silence for the 500,000 United States of Americans that were lost during the pandemic so far, even though it's been less than one year. But whether or not people believe in it still seems to be up to their basic opinion. I say treat it like the 1918 influenza. And whether or not people believe in it, we're all going to be dealing with it for the rest of 2021. But yeah, we got a storm coming. It's going to be a glancing blow. So it's not going to like knock out all the satellites and all the lights. Um, just shows that the sun is waking up. And yeah, what a weird week, man. And I'm optimistic today. I don't know why. That's okay. Just an interesting fact that nobody seems to have pointed out. That with Putin and Biden both in power right now, this is the most Catholic the world's or the superpowers have ever been. Just an observation, not meant to trigger anybody. Just thought it was interesting. To me, Game of Thrones and The Departed are kind of like cautionary tales of how not to handle the, the grand transition. What do I know? Things are definitely complex. Maybe I'm just in a good mood because the sun is waking up. HF Solar, sunspots AR2804 and 2805 grow in cadence with each other as observed in AIA171. The slit of AIA-211. This is cool. So yeah, good news, y'all. I definitely need to spend more time outside. And I'm going to appreciate things like water, electricity, being able to flush my toilet, being able to take showers, even more this spring and summer. Yeah, it's crazy how the earth can be both super hot and super cold, damn near the same time. Bill McKibben. It's 78 degrees Fahrenheit in Beijing, crushing the old record by wintertime by 10 degrees. By breaking a record by 10 degrees is virtually unheard of. Usually records fall by margins of fraction of a degree. It's like hitting 90 degrees in Denver in February. And there's a solar storm right now. Geomagnetic conditions are being observed, which brings me back to volcanoes. I'm pretty sure volcanoes and earthquakes are going to be a big part of the story. And one of the things that Thor News, while pushing for peace on Earth, I've wanted to build new cities of the future in harmony with the planet and the animals and the people. Because who doesn't love and have respect for the bees and the dragonflies? And so, if you are going to have a very knowledgeable, like human-focused infrastructure plan for the next 10 or 100 years, you would build your infrastructure understanding the earth changes that will happen probably with volcanoes and their zones and so it's like we need to meld in volcano and earthquake science with everything while i mean if you're going to build the best infrastructure on earth you got to do it by like the spines of the planet and the strongest of places and be prepared for what's coming down the road am i saying what i'm trying to say correctly enough Anyway, it's a great time for teamwork. So if we feed everybody and team up and keep the lights on, you know, we can build and do cool things and modernize everything, power grid and all. Anyway, here's another look at that Albertan meteorite, Perry Asteroid Fire Clubby. That looks like it made to the ground. So yeah, it'll still be wave after wave after wave of storms, whether they be solar or just regular. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm just trying to soak up this exhausted good mood feeling that I have and pass some of it on to you. I ain't trying to trigger nobody. I ain't hate nobody. I ain't mad at nobody. And I'm definitely still grateful for all the good things in the world. So I just want to say, I love you. Stay cool. May God bless us all. And may better days be ahead of us. Yo, okay? Peace out.